This is going to be a demonstration of FilterStorm 4.5 on iPad. First, I'll load up an image. The icons we have here are the camera icon is to load an image. You can use these triangles up top to go back always. Uh, it's the app info button. There's uh, also access to uh, view EXIF metadata and to add IPTC data, data in there. Uh, it's automations. Those are saved sequences of actions that you can uh, edit one image, save an automation, and then apply that same edit to another image. It's the history icons, the clock. Uh, let's see, you go back to a previous state, like undo, uh, and the export icon. Then below that we have three tabs, canvas, filters, and layers. I'm not going to go into layers in this video, but uh, and they aren't necessary, but there's another video and they're useful if you want some more powerful editing. Uh, let me just use this to toggle the controls over to the right hand side so my hand doesn't cover the screen so much. And I'll start going over the uh, canvas tab. So here we have at the top the crop tool. Um, you can enter in a specific ratio like 3 by 4 or 1 by 1 for a square um, and it will save that. Uh, that's not uh, those aren't a pixel field, it won't uh, crop to a specific pixel value. If you want to do that, you should set the ratio and then scale it to that value. Um, so with nothing in, if I just hit this crop button now, it'll just uh, set the cropping box to be the same aspect ratio as the full image. So um, for cropping, unlike on a desktop where you uh, normally draw a square to crop, here the square is always on the screen and you move around and zoom by pinching the image to position it within the box. If I want to change the shape of the box, I can just drag along the, uh, the edges to change the shape. And there are some preset uh, aspect ratios here you can choose. So hit the X button to cancel and the check button to apply. Beneath that we have the scale to fit fields. Um, so it's like a regular scale tool, which I also have here, but uh, instead of scaling to specific dimensions, what it will do is it'll fit it inside of a box of specific dimensions without ever distorting the, uh, the aspect ratio of the image. So if I put in 3000 and 3000, for example, it'll fit it within a 3000 pixel box, meaning the long side will be 3000 pixels, the short side will just be scaled to match. Um, if I put in blank for the width and 3,000 for the height, it would make the height 3,000 and the width would scale independently um, regardless as to whether or not it was longer or shorter. So if you always want a width or a height of a specific value, you can just enter in one in that field and those will stick around. Um, they get saved whenever you enter in so that uh, if you always use the same thing, it's very useful. There's also a straighten tool, borders tool, um, and down here we have some uh, rotation, quick buttons for rotation and flipping. I'm not going to specifically get into any of that though. Let's go into filters. Um, so here we have things like curves and black and white and vignetting, and these are also things that mostly can be applied using the masking tools, which I'm going to spend a decent amount of time explaining. Um, first, I'm just going to go into uh, the brightness contrast uh, simply because this is something that um, illustrates how a lot of the controls in the filters tab work. Uh, you'll have this uh, cancel button, then one or more sliders here, followed by the apply with mask button and the apply button. Uh, and then you have a settings button over there. So if you move the sliders around, you see you get this real-time preview. I think that actually defaults to being on the right-hand side, but it's on the left right now. Um, you can also, uh, you can tap this button to switch where the preview is, so now it's on the whole image or on the right-hand side. But uh, let's just apply that just so I can go and show you 
tap on the clock icon, you get this history. So now you can see it's opened, cropped, and then we applied some uh, curves. Actually, it was a brightness contrast, but it, in the back end, it's the same thing. So it calls it curves. So I just tapped on image opened to uh, go back to when it was opened. No, I'm not, I am actually going to go into the curves tool. Let me just uh, drag this over here. So if you're unfamiliar with curves, it's a very uh, useful way of editing an image. Um, so you have this graph here, uh, and on the x-axis we have um, basically the histogram from dark to light, where the uh, how bright the pixels, pixels are from, from dark to light. And you can see it's even overlaid across the actual histogram of the image. Um, and on the y-axis we have the same thing, except that's um, the brightness values of the image once we apply the curves change. So right now um, it's a diagonal line, which means the stuff on the left what starts out dark is also at the bottom, so it's going to it's going to end up as dark in the final image. The stuff on the right, uh, the, all the bright pixels are also on the top, so they're going to be uh, bright and stuff in the middle is in the middle. So no, no change, basically, with this diagonal line. If we pull it up, let me just put that on the other side. Um, so now you can see the stuff that's towards the bottom uh, is slightly, is no longer towards the bottom uh, of the y-axis. Now it's slightly higher, so that makes it brighter. Uh, and same on the top, the brights are getting brighter and the darks are getting, dar uh, the darks are getting brighter. So we can use a simple single point curve to brighten or darken the image. Um, and you can do it more so towards the highlights or the shadows. But it gets more interesting when you tap this add point button and add another point by tapping again. So now what we can do is we can make different shapes with this curve. Um, so if we do something like this, now we've pulled the dark area up, making the darks brighter, and we've pulled the bright area down, making the brights darker. So that reduces contrast. And you can see we get this kind of muddy image. But you can also see with the darks brightened, you can, get, uh, you can see more, over, uh, more detail there, actually, because what was hidden in the shadows is not quite so hidden anymore. If we do the opposite, pull darks down and the brights up, make the darks darker, brights brighter, gets really contrasty image. Now the nice thing about curves is you can set where the contrast is going specifically. Um, so you can add contrast towards the darker end of the image or towards the brighter end of the image and you can do more complex things with more points, which I'm not going to do right now. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to set the contrast so that the sky is more contrasty. Um, and I'm going to switch from luminance here to RGB. So the difference between luminance and RGB is uh, the luminance curve, it takes the brightness value of the entire pixel and it scales the brightness of the whole pixel. The RGB curves uh, takes each channel separately, the red channel, and applies the curve to the red channel, takes the green channel, applies the curve to the green channel, and the blue channel. Um, and in this case, it will make the sky more saturated when I apply this change, and that's why I'm, uh, and that's why I'm using RGB. But if I were to just apply this, you see that all the detail would be lost in the skydivers and a lot in, this, in the uh, parachute. So instead of hitting the check button to apply to the whole image, I'm going to hit the mask button. And so now the image looks the same, but we have these masking tools. So up top we have a cancel button. It'll just cancel us out of here. Then here we have the pan zoom button. It just allows us to uh, move around the image and position it without fear of editing the mask. Then here we have uh, a brush tool. So we can change the size and the opacity and the softness of the brush. I like keeping it down, usually the opacity. Um, so that just lets us brush on the change. Uh, and the eraser tool works in the same way, except it uh, 
erases the change, obviously. Um, then things get a, uh, get interesting. We have a gradient tool. So it allows us to drag these two, two points and set the change along a nice gradient. So you can do something like an ND, uh, graduated ND filter with this. And you can set different shapes. So you can have a circle and on a line. I'm going to cancel that though with that X. Uh, and here we have the color range selector. So what this will do is it'll take the, the, um, the value of the color underneath the loop here. And based on a tolerance set by the slider, it'll adjust so you can see if the tolerance is really low. It adjusts very fairly specific uh, pixels. But if you just tolerance higher, which cancel that too. Um, then we have this vignette tool uh, allows us. This is good for something like blurring the edges of an image. Um, there's a plain vignette tool in the filters menu for if you just want to use the standard black. But <clears throat> using vignette, a vignette with masking lets you uh, get a little more control. I'm going to cancel that too. And then finally, uh, that button is a uh, this is an invert mask button. I just use the brush there to show you that it inverts the mask. But I'm, what I'm going to do here is just use a gradient to fade on this change like this. Oh, should I do it there or no? And I'm going to hit the check to apply it. I'm going to come here. Skydivers just take an eraser. Uh, I'm going to make it smaller. I'm just going to make sure we just don't lose too much detail here by erasing the mask from, from there. That's good enough. And so this is OK. I'll just hit the check and apply that to the image. So now I can uh, go and I can do something similar again with the curves. This time I'm sticking with the luminance. Uh, and I'll set the contrast for the parachute instead to make it a bit more dramatic. And I'll go in the mask. And this time I'll just take a uh, brush, make it big and not very opaque. Uh, this is probably how you want to use a brush if you're going to do uh, dodging and burning. So it lets you go over the same area of the image multiple times because it's low opacity to bring out more, uh, more in certain places and less in others. That's fine. Hit the check to apply. And there we have an edited image. Um, there's going to be more videos on the website um, specifically for layers uh, and combining images with layers. There's a, a video on that on iPhone that's quite good and it works the same way on iPad. Um, when you're done with editing, you can use this uh, tap the export button and you tap on which ones uh, to select which places you want to send it, photo library, email, hit the export button. There's also a video about setting up new export destinations uh, that's also shown on iPhone, but it works exactly the same way on iPad. Um, and you just hit the export button when you're done.